So somebody had put in a question, um, what circumstances could this occur? And they're taking wording from the CPT manual just for some clarification. So they retrieved it saying under the immunization administration for vaccines and toxoids. I see kind of a common thread here today. We're talking about this, but it is flu shot season. So for immunization administration of any vaccine that is not accompanied by that face-to-face -face physician or qualified healthcare professional counseling to the patient or family. So what case do we have that where we don't have face-to-face -face physician or uh, professional counseling and when you receive your immunization? So um, as he's bringing up the answer sheet, when we talk about um, immunizations. So typically we know that when you go to the office and you're getting your immunization and they're going to say, um, okay, you could have some redness, some swelling, especially if it's for a kid, you know, give them some Tylenol afterwards, maybe if there's any kind of pain or discomfort for the child. So under, um, CPT. So I took this directly from CPT. To report the codes 90460 and 90461 only when there's a physician or qualified healthcare professional, and I'm going to abbreviate that instead of having to type it every time, um, providing that face to face counseling for the patient or a family member, dependent upon their age, during the administration of the vaccine. For immunization and administration of any vaccine that's not accompanied by that factor, use the next range of codes. So, and that's where their question came from. So, right under immunization administration for vaccines and toxoids, I think it's the first or second page in the medicine section, um, you're going to see that, head, that header for that category. And then this is what it says right after that. So, um, or administration of vaccines over 18 years of age, I forgot that part. We're gonna report the codes um, in the uh, range 90471 to 90474. Then it says a parenthetical, see also the instructions for use of the CPT codebook for that definition. So now you've got to flip all the way to the very front of your book. The very beginning of CPT, there are instructions for how to use CPT, and they're in those Roman numeral pages. The third paragraph there in says, when an advanced practice nurse or physician assistant are working with the physicians, they're considered working that same specialty or same subspecialty, okay? So you have a PA, you have a nurse practitioner, somebody like that in your office, they are working as if they are that same physician, right? So in ours, we have PAs and, and nurse practitioners. They're working as orthopedic providers. Same thing in a dermatology or cardiology clinic. So these professionals are distinct from clinical staff. Those professionals, a PA or a nurse practitioner, they are working under the scope of their license, under the scope of the state qualifications, for that type of provider. They are different than clinical staff. So a clinical staff member is a person who works under the supervision of a physician or one of these other qualified healthcare professionals and who's allowed by law, by regulation, and by that facility policy, all three, to perform or assist in the performance of a specified professional service, but who does not individually report that service. They're a clinical staff member. They are allowed to help based upon if they're an MA certification or some states don't allow MAs to do certain things, but they have a law, a regulation of their society and your facility standards that they can perform certain things, but they don't bill for them. They don't do that. And a physician doesn't bill for it either because they're supervised, they're not the ones providing that service. They don't report that service. So scrolling down a little bit more, we have our two codes that we said, the 90460 and 90461. That's administration with counseling, right? So that's the physician, a nurse, somebody says, okay, 
watch out for any redness, swelling, do you have an allergic reaction to eggs, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever kind of counseling or um, information they are providing to the patient. So those are the codes that are going to accompany the vaccine administration at the time it's given by a physician or qualified health professional. So the case where we're going to use when it's non-face-to-face is our um, clinical staff. So we have the codes laid out um, a little bit further down. So the 90471 through 90474. So it depends on the route of administration is the difference between these two codes. So we have um, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intradermal, or we have intranasal or oral. So if that's our clinical staff member providing those services of um, in immunization, either intranasally, orally, or intramuscular. So I have an example as well. Um, I'm one who learns by example. So say you have a primary care office and on Saturday they want to hold a flu clinic, right? So they have a medical assistant that's giving the flu injections to all the patients. They are going to code 90471 or 90473 dependent upon the route of administration that was used. You're going to report that 90460 for a patient who is 18 years or younger and receives a vaccine counseling by a physician or other qualified healthcare professional. Those two components must be met in order to use the two face-to-face -face vaccination codes. And we'll finish up a little bit further down. And that, if that is not met, if you do not have both of those criteria met, then you will use that second family set of codes, the 90471 through 90474. So that's the difference. That's where um, immunizations talk about uh, non-face-to-face component is when it's performed by a medical staff, a clinical staff member, not a qualified healthcare professional. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.